Dan, it's Bob and Tony here in our Eastern Connecticut studio. Coach, thanks for calling in. Hello, Coach. How are y'all doing tonight? We're doing well, Coach. And again, it's uh, it, great to speak with you. It's been a few weeks since we last spoke, and uh, Chris and I on the radio side have talked to you numerous times, and uh, we're just honored to have you on the television side. It and really thanks is an again. honor, Coach. Thank Hope you. you've been well. Doing well, and uh, glad to be on with you guys. All right, and, and for our uh, viewers out there, uh, you must remember Mr. Reeves, uh, eight years as a player, 23 years as a head coach in the NFL, grew up in Georgia, played all sports, again, went to South Carolina, uh, is in various sports hall of fames, Again, coached in the NFL 23 years, three different squads. And we'll get to a lot of this as we go on. But, uh, again, Coach, we usually start out by asking, uh, we, we'll take you way back uh, to when you were young and following sports. And uh, I know you were a multi-sport athlete, Coach, but tell us about your upbringing in Georgia. We know that you're a big advocate of uh, any type of player playing multi-sports. But tell us about who you followed as a kid. Who were your, some of your heroes? Uh, we'll take it down memory lane a, a little bit. <laughs> oh, there's no question that. I had a lot of them. I grew up on a farm. had, uh, you know, two brothers and a sister. And, uh, you know, had a lot of cousins that lived uh, right close to us. And whatever was in uh, season, that's what we played, uh, you know, every weekend. And we got together. And so, you know, loved all the sports. Uh, was fortunate enough to, you know, go to a high school. I had a really good program when I was in the ninth grade. And, uh you know, football was the favorite of the three and uh, ended up being a quarterback, uh, you know, my uh, freshman year and ended up, uh, you know, playing varsity my sophomore year. So three years there at uh, America's High School and uh, ended up getting a chance to play, you know, college ball at the University of South Carolina and played quarterback there and uh, never had a really good team, but, uh, you know, had four great years there with a coach named Marvin Bass, who was one of the first men that I hired as uh, an assistant coach on my staff when I became head coach, you know, with the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. And uh, signed as a free agent. Back when free agent really meant free now. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Signed as a free agent with the Dallas Cowboys for a thousand dollar signing bonus and eleven thousand dollar contract. <laughs> and, uh, you know, was fortunate enough to make the team that year in 1965. And uh, in 1966, I was able to start, and we had a really good team. Bob Hayes, Don Meredith, you know, had a lot of good uh, players, uh, you know, on the offensive side. Don Perkins was one of the great fullbacks in the league at the time. And so I was on a team that uh, set a record for uh, uh, most points scored in a season with Don Meredith as our quarterback and uh, ended up getting beat by the Green Bay Packers for the right to go to Super Bowl one. Uh, next year, we got beat by the Green Bay Packers for the right to go to Super Bowl two in the Ice Bowl game. So, you know, I had a, a very good start, but a great coach and coach Tom Landry and then I mm -hmm. tore my knee up in uh, 1969 and got beat up by a young man named Calvin Hill in 1970. Mm -hmm. And Coach Landry asked me if I'd be a player coach. Yeah. And uh, became a player coach for three years there. And uh, we went to the Super Bowl the first two years. And I thought, this is, a, this is the easiest profession in the world. <laughs> two Super Bowls, two years as a coach. <laughs> but I, I learned how, how, much, uh, how difficult it was to get there. But I was under a great coach and Coach Landry. Gave me a you know a good start, uh, you know, learning how to be a head coach and was fortunate enough to get the uh, head coach at Denver and was there for 12 years, four in New York, and then uh, seven in Atlanta. So. Wow, Coach, you did all the work for us. We did, <laughs> went right through your timeline there. Well, I wanted to get it over with quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. But I, we were going to ask you, of course, so we you talked about you were uh, you ended your college career as the leading passer in South Carolina history and also offered a baseball contract coach by the Pirates? That's correct. Uh, you know, I actually, that was in high school. I got, uh, we won the state championship in baseball uh, my senior year, and I was a, an outfielder and a, and a pitcher, and they wanted to make a catcher out of me, and I didn't think that was what I, I didn't want to squat behind the plate for to make my, my living. So, you know, I turned that down because, like I said, football was my favorite, and I had a chance to, you know, get a scholarship and play at the University of South Carolina. 
Again, uh, we're on the phone with legendary player and coach Dan Reeves. Tony, I know you want to talk about some of the early Dallas days. Well, you know, and it's it's such an honor, Coach. We're just so pleased to to have you tonight. And I'm going to give you my recollections as a you know young boy watching the Cowboys, and it was America's team and Dandy Don and Coach Landry and Bob Hayes, the world's fastest human, and. I, uh, you guys really branded pro football to such an extent where it really became, you know, maybe our national pastime. I wanted to ask you about Tom Landry. When you first met him, you played under him, you worked under him as a coach. Um, what, uh, what can you tell us about Coach Landry? Well, first of all, Coach Landry was extremely competitive. In, in whatever he did, he wanted to be the best at, you know, whatever he tried to do. Uh, he felt like that preparation was the greatest motivator of all. If you were prepared for whatever you were, you know, trying to do, if you were prepared uh, and not, you know, be surprised by anything that happened, and he would cover every single thing that you could think possible in every game, whether it was offense, defense, special team. And uh, he was just extremely uh, organized in, in practice. I mean, you knew exactly how long you were going to be out there, what we were trying to accomplish. So he was competitive, but he was extremely organized, and then he was just one of the, the greatest people that you'd ever be around. Uh, taught us an awful lot about not only football, but about life itself. And so many of us were very fortunate that we, you know, played with him, played for him, and, uh, you know, got to know him. He just he just a great human being. And, Coach, that's, those 66 and 67 years were very special for you. You rushed for almost 1,400 yards, and you caught also caught 80 passes. You led the, uh, the league in touchdowns in 66 with 16 touchdowns. When you uh, were playing under Landry, was this something, did you think you would be used that way as far as an all-around player, or was this uh, something that just kind of evolved? Well, it kind of evolved. I can tell you real quickly, I, I'd never played running back before. Mm. I'd been a quarterback and, uh, you know, through my college, uh, high school and college career. And, you know, ended up uh, signing as a defensive back because I played safety in college. And that's where they thought I would play because at quarterback that year that I came in in 65, not only do we have Don Meredith, we had Craig Morton and Jerry Rome, uh, you know, two you know, very good, you know, college quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, so I knew I wasn't going to play uh, quarterback, and I was trying to be a defensive back. We ended up scrimmaging the Los Angeles Rams, where we were on offense and they were on defense uh, in the scrimmage. And at that time, we had like three or four running backs that got hurt prior to that scrimmage. And I ended up, you know, getting to play quite a bit in that scrimmage and was fortunate enough to make, a, you know, a few plays that kind of caught their – you know, attention, and they kept me on offense. And, you know, through some injuries, I, you know, I, I made basically on special teams my my rookie year. I played mostly special teams, but did get to play some, you know, at running back. And then in 1966, uh, as you said, they moved. Uh, and then we really changed our offense uh, to mm -hmm. where we put uh, the running back uh, in motion a great deal to try to isolate situations on Bob Hayes. Uh, also flanked him out, you know, where I was a wide receiver in a lot of situations. So, you know, I was just very fortunate that I was at, at the right place at the right time, and we had a great, you know, great year that year. And uh, like I said, got beat by Green Bay to the right for Super Bowl one. And for the record, uh, Dan Reeves in 100 games as a player – uh, rushed for almost 2,000 yards, 1,700 yards receiving, and scored 42 touchdowns. And we'll get to his coaching in a bit, but Tony, question. And, Coach, this one comes from a uh, good friend in Texas who wants me to ask you this. Your pass in the ice bowl to Lance Rensel for the score, um, was that a call play? Did Mr. Landry call that? Did uh, Don Meredith call it, or did you guys improvise that? We had worked on it, you know, and, and, and uh, wanted to run it to the left because we didn't expect they would uh, think that we were going to throw a pass, you know, going to the left. And uh, it was the first play of the fourth quarter. You remember, it was extremely cold. And Don Meredith uh, at that time was calling the plays. And we were in the huddle, and he said, what are you, we had run that running play with pitch, 
you know, quick pitch with the tackle pulling out in front of you. Uh, we'd run it several times, and they had come up and forced it real fast. And he said, what do you think about the halfback pass? And I said, well, they're coming up fast. I think it would be a good call. So he said, okay, we're going to call it. Well, because it was cold, I put my hands down as deep as I could in my, my pants to try to keep my hands warm because it was so cold. And I uh, actually didn't take my hands out and put them out until we had shifted out of high formation to a split backfield. Mm-hmm. And they did. They came up. Both the safety and the corner came up. You know, Lance was wide open. And uh, and when I first let it go, I thought, oh, my goodness, I've overthrown him. But uh, he, made, he made the catch and got it in the end zone, and that put us ahead really on the field that we were playing on. I really thought that, uh, you know, we'd probably won the game because it's going to be so hard to, to move the football. But Bart Starr had a different – he had a different plan. He moved them 80 yards on the next drive, uh, you know, to win the game. And at the Ice Bowl itself, again, a.k.a. the 67 championship game, Coach, we were watching videos we were. over the weekend, Tony and I, of that game. And uh, I, I, I'm sure you've been asked a ton of times. I mean, it's hard to describe that kind of cold. The thing that stood out to me was as cold as it was, it was nobody could really keep their footing. I, I saw you slip a few times. Was that just due to just ice on the field, condensation? What was it like on that field? So Bob was, Hayes get a yeah. couple times. <laughs> yeah, they had, uh, you know, had a first uh, team to really put in a heating coils underneath the field. Yeah. And it was supposed to keep, uh, you know, it from freezing. But what it did, it was, like you said, condensation. Oh. And, you know, because it was so cold, you know, it just froze, and it was like, you know, an ice arena. And it was very difficult, uh, you know, to stand up, and and then extremely cold. I mean, uh, you know, you get to 15 to 17 below zero, uh, you know, I can I can vouch for it. That's really cold. <laughs> Numbers don't mean anything after that. You're right, Coach. And then... No, it really doesn't. I thought 32 <laughs> degrees when it I froze. I thought that was as cold as it could get, but I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, the 68, again, uh, devastating knee injury. Uh, do you remember exactly how it happened, Coach? And uh, you probably you probably will never forget when it happened and uh, how that curtailed your career after that. Yeah, no question. It was the St. Louis Cardinals, and I uh, was running a sweep to the right. Uh, and a guard and, uh, was pulling on the play, got knocked back into the backfield and was very close to me. And I was trying to, you know, get out from behind him because that ball attracts the wrong kind of people. You, <laughs> I knew somebody was coming, and I couldn't see. And I was trying to cut out from behind the guard, you know, to get out from behind him. And when I planted my left uh, foot, uh, the defensive back, Johnny Sample, came underneath and, you know, caught my knee fully extended and, uh, you know, just tore everything right. that you could tear in it and, uh you know, had it operated on the next day. And like I said, uh, missed the rest of the, you know, the season. And uh, next year we had a guy named Calvin Hill was rookie of the year. So uh, thank goodness Coach Landry, uh, you know, wanted me to be a player coach and became a player coach in 1970. And Calvin Hill, uh, in these in these parts here in Connecticut, Coach, very popular. Yes. Uh, incredibly popular from Yale. I've had a chance to speak with him just, just momentarily at a uh, – at a an honorary thing a few years ago at the Yale Bowl, but uh, what do you remember about Calvin? Seemed like a very nice man. So uh, extremely and extremely talented. You know, he was such a tall, lanky, yeah. you know, running back. He could fall for two or three yards uh, mm-hmm. because he was so tall and so powerful. And he was, you know, I ended up like I said, being a player coach, and he was one of, the, you know, here's a guy that I, had, uh, you know, competed against for a position, and now I'm coaching him you know, and playing too. And I remember one of the best uh, moves I probably ever made was he and I were uh, in 1960, 69, I think it was, we were playing uh, a game and he and I ended up in the backfield because of the injury to Walt Garrison. And uh, we ran, a, you know, a Don Meredith called a play and I was supposed to run the football coming out of the huddle. I said, Calvin, you run it, you know, and I'll block for you. He ended up going for a touchdown. Yeah. Coach Lander told me I, that was when he knew I, I, I was a coach. <laughs> Good call. Your best call. <laughs> That's great. Tony, question. And, Coach, uh, when you came to Denver, you were a young man um, coaching an NFL team. And uh, were you scared at that point? 
No, really and truly, I, I have been interviewed uh, probably five or six times, you know, for a head coaching job because we were very successful, you know, each year making the playoffs. And, uh, you know, I was in a good system and, you know, people were, were interested in, in coaches that, were, you know, had come from a successful program. And, mm-hmm. and nobody had really been more successful than the Cowboys. And so I was interviewed for, you know, several head coaching jobs and I felt like I, I was ready. Uh, you know, to be a head coach. And I was very fortunate, you know, that I went to a a team that only a couple of years prior to that, uh, we were played, we played in the Super Bowl. And so, uh, you know, most coaches, you know, first coaching job is with a bad football team. And they had just had a a poor year the year before and still had a lot of great athletes. So I was just very fortunate, you know, when I went there that we had a lot of good players, and actually we were, we were 10 and 6, you know, the first year that I was there, uh, you know, in Denver. Yeah, they, uh, again, Coach uh, was there 12 years in Denver, 110 wins, 73 losses. Again, three a- AFC titles as we make the transition from his playing career to coaching career. He, uh, when you were in Dallas, Coach, you, you played, I think I counted, the last count was eight Hall of Famers, and then you went on to coach a few in Denver, like your Elways, Dorsets, Shannon Sharps, guys like that. But uh, we've had a couple. Uh, we had one of your former players as a guest on the uh, the show a while ago, Carl Mecklenburg, who seemed like oh, a yeah. very tough yeah. guy, and he had uh, very nice things to say about you. Your memories of Carl? Oh, yeah. we uh, At that time, a team that was really playing well was the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> and they had a couple of uh, undersized, quick guys, that were good pass rushers, uh, you know, in that Miami uh, Dolphins defense that Coach Shula had. And, uh, you know, looking on film and everything, that's what Carl Mecklenburg reminded us of, you know, was the pass rushers that uh, Miami had. And uh, we drafted him, uh, I don't know, back then, I don't remember, but it was a late round that we took him. And, uh, boy, uh, he came in from day one, and we knew he was going to be a – you know, a, a spectacular player because he was such a hard worker and very talented, uh, had a, a great, you know, couple of steps, and that's what it takes. You have to have those first couple of quick steps, you know, to be able to get a, to be a good pass rusher, and, and Carl was outstanding. And also just a, you know, a solid defensive player. We dropped him into coverage some too, but uh, turned out to be one of the great pass rushers in the league. Yeah, he surely was. Tony? And, Coach, when you were at Denver, um, you were working with a man named John Elway. And uh, can you tell us how uh, your relationship with John and what you thought of him and uh, how you guys worked together? Well, gosh, we won over 100 games uh, yeah. you know, together. We were very fortunate, you know, to get John. Uh, uh, we had had a bad year my second year. Uh, we had a bad year. It was a strike-shortened year. And, uh, you know, because of the bad record, we were, we drafted, I think, like fourth. We were like the fourth uh, team to draft. And, you know, tried very hard to talk to, uh, you know, the Baltimore Colts about uh, John Elway. And, um, you know, they were asking so much for him that there wasn't any way that we could do it. We had so many other needs other than just quarterback. And, uh, you know, after he said he wouldn't play for him, uh, ended up our owner. Edgar Kaiser had a good relationship with the owner, you know, of, uh, of Baltimore Colts. And uh, really and truly, they ended up making the, the deal. So it was just very fortunate that we were able to, to make a deal for John Elway. And, and really and truly, in his rookie year, uh, we started him. He struggled a little bit early uh, in that, that year. Uh, he sat on the bench for a while and was able to learn all the terminology and everything. And he came back, and it's really funny, against the Baltimore Colts in his rookie year. Uh, we were down by 13 points in the fourth quarter, and he brought it from, you know, from behind to win that game. And we knew at that point we had something special. And uh, he was just an unbelievable, uh, athletic, strong arm, uh, really smart, uh, you know, could, could do so many things. And, uh, you know, he was just great. We won, like I said, over 100 games. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, we got to the Super Bowl and, and didn't win them. Mm-hmm. And the one that they, uh, you know, the two people they look at is the quarterback and the coach saying, you know, we're not good enough. You know, they didn't have a good quarterback, didn't have a good coach. 
and so forth. And, uh, you know, that was frustrating, you know, for John and uh, frustrating for, for me also. But uh, I have great respect for him. He's done a tremendous job now as a general manager, you know, of the Denver mm-hmm. Broncos now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, heck, I couldn't have had the career I had if it wasn't for John Elway. I got super respect for John and, uh, you know, what he did and, and helped us accomplish. And as Coach mentioned, uh, it took taking three Denver teams to the Super Bowl, would later take one to Atlanta. Again, never win the Super Bowl, but it's it's an amazing accomplishment to me to get to four Super Bowls. Coach, uh, I don't know if this is a silly question, or was any of the Super Bowl losses any worse than the any of the <laughs> others? Because I know you it just when you when you leave the uh, the stadium that day, you didn't win the Super Bowl. But uh, was there one that really sticks in your craw more than the other? Well, no question. The one against the San Francisco 49ers, we had mm. uh, you had not lost to the 49ers, uh, you know, in the regular season. Uh, so I felt very good about the game, and yet we were down by, I think, 35 at halftime. Uh, probably the longest halftime I, I've ever been a part of. Uh, you know, they gave me a two-minute warning. I called the team up. You know, let's go out and play like it's nothing to nothing. Uh, you know, forget about the score, and let's just play well the second half. They come back up again and said, uh, uh, Coach, sorry, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer. We'll give you another two-minute one. So I had three two-minute warnings. You know, you call the yeah. team up, you're down by 35. So that one was a, a tough one to take because, they, you know, Joe Montana, they just did a tremendous job. And really and truly, yeah. their defense didn't get enough credit uh, in that game because Montana and their offense did have a, a super day. But their defense was – extremely good and that's the reason they were you know world champions because their defense was so strong we're uh, still on the phone with coach dan reeves just a couple more minutes with mr reeves tony question and coach when you came to new york i mean we've always bob and i grew up in and around new york and uh the fact of new york kind of being its own special place with the fans and the pressures and how'd you find new york and how'd you find working with phil sims Oh, I loved it. Uh, you know, I told Phil I wish I'd have got him, you know, at the start of his career and instead of toward the end of his career. I never, you know, was more excited about having a quarterback like Phil. It wasn't anything that you asked him to do that he wasn't, you know, willing to try. Uh, he was just extremely uh, dedicated to trying to, you know, win as many football games as he could. And if you could throw the football in Giant Stadium, uh, that is the. T- I didn't realize how difficult it was, the wind tunnel and everything, to, you know, to throw the the ball in that stadium. I mean, Phil to complete the passes that he did playing the majority of his games, you know, in Giant Stadium is is a credit to how well he could throw the football because that's a very difficult place. I, in all my time in Denver, twelve years, I would have never do anything but elect to take the, you know, the ball. And there was probably, I'm going to say 60 to 70 percent of the time that I would take the, the win instead of taking the football, you know, at mm-hmm. the start of the game if you win the mm-hmm. toss. So it was just a, a very difficult stadium to play in and field, uh, you know, knew exactly where he could, you know, throw certain routes. Uh, but he was, he was just great, uh, you know, to work with, uh, just a high caliber person that you would like to have and uh, like I said I wish I'd have had him at the start of his career both of us and you know it would have been a lot of fun instead of getting him at the end of his career and coach as far as uh coaching in general would you consider going back uh if you were to be offered at this time Oh, you know, if it's the right situation, and uh, and I don't know how many right situations there are. <laughs> you know, now when you've been around, uh, you know, you know what it takes now, and, and ownership and uh, front office, all of those things are so important for you to be successful. And, you know, I was fortunate enough that, you know, of the places that I coached uh, through, you know, being in Dallas, through, you know, Denver, then New York and Atlanta, all of those had uh, great front office people that you could, uh, you know, work together to be a, because it's not just one person that does. You depend on so many other people to get the job done, and I was surrounded by a lot of good people in every one of those places. Again, 23 years as a head coach, eight years as a player, one of the great NFL careers 
that we've ever come across. And coach, our time is about up. We've uh, we've just about scratched the surface. Maybe down the road we can talk to you uh, in length about maybe more of your time in Atlanta. Your some of the Hall of Famers you play with. We've uh, when you have a guy like yourself, it's hard to get to everything in about 20 minutes. But it's been an honor. We'll be in it touch. Really has, coach. And thank uh, you. we can't thank you enough for giving us some time this evening. Great gratitude. Any, anytime, guys. Love to. Okay. Good night, coach, good and night, be coach. well. Thank good you. night. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.